Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. And uh, we are in chapter eight talking about quality characteristics testing. And finally, we are moving to our very last topic of this chapter, which is 8.7 API testing. And as a part of this, we are also uh, coming to the end of this entire boot camp. But as a part of this tutorial, we would like to give you a quick outline of what exactly API testing is all about. When you talk about the API testing, first of all, API stands for Application Programming Interface, which is a code which enables communication between different processes, programs, and or systems. APIs are often utilized in a client-server relationship where one process supplies some kind of functionalities to the other processes. Now, this sounds so technical, right? Let's make it a very simple way to understand what could an API do. Now, talking about APIs, it is more about interacting between two different systems which are nowhere related to each other. For example, I have an application called as Make My Trip or Booking.com, where you search for available flights, hotels, etc. Now, when you talk about searching a flight, of course, Booking.com or Make My Trip doesn't have any sort of their own flights, right? They don't run an airline company. All you need to do is go to those websites like Booking.com and make a search on the given criteria. Now, what does Booking.com do? They trigger an API in terms of all the inputs which they have collected from you. That what's the from city, what's the to city, what's the date of flight, and what type of flight you're looking at, like one-way return, and number of passengers. And they send this request through the API to so many airliners' websites. And their database will get this request from your interaction and return back with the response of all the available flights which they have. And that's how you get a result window which shows the list of all the available flights with their cost and everything. So we generally pass the parameters and attributes through the header and we ask them for a response with so many attributes that, hey, what's the flight time? What's the arrival time? What's the cost of it? Which airports does it travel from, and all that sort of information. Now, the point here is, how did Booking.com interact, interact with, say, for example, you know, Emirates, Etihad, Singapore Airlines, Malaysia Airlines, or Lufthansa? They have their own databases where they have their updated list of available flights. So how did Booking.com came to know about their available list of flights is because of this interaction, which was built by an API. So API is all about building up the interface between two different applications in order to communicate and pass information based on request specific. Not always, but whenever a user sends a request, it sends a request in turn to these websites and collect the responses from all of them. And this is possible that sometimes you may not see a particular airline in your result window, and you may wonder, that, hey, is that that flight is not flying that day? Or is that this particular flight is not available? But if you go to their website, you may find that flight. That means the allocated number of seats to booking.com, which that airline has given, is no longer available. So that does not mean the API failed. The API worked, but it did not result any returns. The reason was maybe the allocated number of seats are already full. So talking about API testing, is basically to test the you know interfaces. And this is a type of testing rather than a technique actually. In certain aspects, respects, the API testing is quite similar to testing a graphical user interface where you just pass on the inputs and look for the desired outputs and response body from there. The focus is on the evaluation of input values and return data. But it can be done on the backend like using the res request response uh, codes and data, or sometime even on the UI, which is the final touch to make sure that when a user is searching the flight, he or she receives the required set of available flights. The negative testing is often crucial when dealing with the APIs, passing on the wrong values, and retrieving no results from there. 
Now, programmers who use APIs to access service external to their own code may try to use API interfaces in ways for which they are not intended. That means that robust error handling is essential to avoid incorrect operations which are being filtered in the middleware between the client and the server. Also, combinatorial testing of many different interfaces may be required because APIs are often used to conjunctions with the other APIs also. So there could be several combinations and there are some techniques like combinatorial technique where you can create combinations of uh, different APIs to be tested as per the scope. So that's another thing which we can take care of. And because a single interface may contain several parameters and there are a number of combinations possible. APIs frequently are loosely coupled, resulting in the very, very real possibility of lost transactions or timing glitches as well. So there could be a timeout defined for each API, and whenever the activity does not take place well within the timeout provided, it returns a message that system timed out or request timeout. This necessity thorough testing of the recovery and retry mechanisms can be also triggered. An organization that provides an API interface must ensure that all services have a high, very high availability. This often requires strict uh, reliability testing by the API publisher as well as the infrastructure support. So there are organizations which can give you the APIs, uh, which is they are taking the assurance that your APIs will be responded and they're always going to work because some failures can cost you a lot of money. Also adding more value from the applicability, uh, API testing is becoming more important for testing systems of systems as the individual systems become distributed or use remote processing as a way of offloading some work to other processes. So you can always distribute uh, work on different servers rather than you know interacting with one, which is a very straightforward example that when you search anything on Google, by default it returns you the result from your country specific inputs first. And that is where uh, it becomes very crucial and it, it certainly distributes the load. So it does not go to google.com directly. It first tries to go to google.co.in to return you the first results. Now, what kind of examples where we can talk about API testing? We can talk about operating system calls, service-oriented architecture, which we also know as SOAP, SOA, and uh, remote procedure calls, which is RPC, and all sort of web services, which acts as a middleware between a system to another system, or within a system as well, when you talk about the client and the server there could be layers of web services which can filter your unwanted queries or only take the valid queries to the server to reduce the load. Now, software containerization results in the division of software programs into several containers which communicate with each other using mechanisms such as those listed above. Now, API testing should also target these interfaces to be covered there as well. Now again, this is just a brief outline theme and you can spend more details understanding how does the API works in reality. And there are so many methods which can be used there to pass the, you know, or to perform the testing altogether. Or even if you talk about finding the defects related to it, you can understand the different codes which you get in the response from the API. Also talking about a bit on the limitations and difficulties, what you can face or you can talk about in API testing. Testing an API directly usually requires a test engineer to use specialized tools because manual it could be difficult because there is a typically no direct graphical user interface associated with an API. Tools may be required to set up the initial environment, marshal the data, invoke the API, and determine the results. So generally we pass attributes through a curl command using the headers, body, attributes, etc. and we trigger the request and the APIs will interact with the target environment and result with the response code. And that response value or body will let us know if the response was received or not. And even you know when you talk about testing it without an UI, we need some skills of understanding the API's response and request body to be configured for sure. So. That's all from this particular tutorial team, and this is also the last tutorial of our bootcamp. 
I hope you had a wonderful experience altogether learning a lot about fundamentals of testing. Should there be anything else, always feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to assist you and respond back here with any query. This bootcamp should help you to build great fundamentals to get started with a journey of being a test engineer. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.